After the hive has been painted, the bees can be added. For this demonstration we're going to use a shook swarm and we're actually demonstrating it, although you can't see them because they're off to the right of the camera, is a gallery of our local beekeeping association. And that's why I'm waving my arms because I'm explaining what I'm about to do. What I've done is taken the existing hive, which is green, and moved it to one side on the ground. You can see that in the middle distance. The new hive is being placed on the old hive's position. And this hive is going to be run as two brood chambers of medium frames. The bottom chamber has been filled with ten plastic frames, wax coated, and the top hive body has about six frames in, with a gap in the centre, because the bees are going to be introduced using the technique known as a shook swarm. Here I'm removing the dummy board, shaking off some of the bees into the new hive, the first occupants, and then I'm simply going to go through the hive, removing it a frame at a time and shaking a little bit of brushing to get the bees into the new hive. I'm wearing gloves because it's not an ideal day for doing this and I wasn't quite certain of the temperament of the bees. I'm just checking what there is there. There's actually some brood on that outer frame which is not unusual with polystyrene hives. I've got an empty hive body behind the new hive there and it's into that that I'm going to put the frames after I've shaken the bees off them. The best of those frames with sealed brood will actually be used in some nucleus hives. You can see one just on the right there. I'm checking for the queen because uh, it's useful to know if the queen actually makes this transfer. If you're particularly worried about the queen you could go through the old hive first and catch her and uh, cage her then it reintroduce her after the uh, shook swarm. When the last frame has been shaken into the hive, all that remains is to get the last of the bees into the new hive. Many will still be clinging to the hive body, so give them a shake and a bang and they'll drop into the new hive. Using a bee brush here, um, the important thing about a bee brush is to make certain that it's always clean, so I uh, always put mine through the dishwasher after it's being used. One thing I'm not going to do is shake the floor into the new hive as there could be all sorts of rubbish and dead bees on the floor. So I'm just going to gently move some of the live bees across into it, but being very careful that none of the debris in the bottom of the hive falls into the new hive. Of course you don't have to use a shook swarm for introducing your bees. For a nucleus, one of our conversion kits is, uh, makes an easy and uh, painless way of getting the bees into the hive. We're now fitting the uh, frames we took out earlier to make the gap into which the swarm was shaken. Note that we're using plastic frames here. When the last frame has been fitted, you just brush off some of the bees from the top and fit the feeder and the roof. It is essential when having done a shook swarm to always feed the bees with sugar syrup. And we're using a one to one solution here. It's one kilogram of sugar to one litre of water. And the last thing we do at the moment is fit the hive strap. We won't actually fill the feeder until the evening, as filling the feeder during the day can cause robbing. You will see as we fit the hive strap that the 
hive actually wobbles a bit. This stand was actually designed to take the hives facing at uh, 90 degrees to the way they are now. However, the bees uh, overwintered facing in this direction, so we've assembled this new hive facing in the same way. Um, but over the course of the next few days, we'll slowly rotate it so that the entrance faces to the right.